Hello, I've been considering for a while this idea of doing a full face of products having the most unique texture. Today is the right day to do so, and we will go into the details of these amazing products. So it's a full face. I'm blessed with <laughs> Cooperos. I believe that this red part uh, on my face is due to the Clarisonic. Do you remember that? I need to treat this redness that is always there by going to a dermatologist. I haven't had the resources and the time to do so. So for now, I will use this old Surat concealer. I don't think that this product is particularly unique, but since we are doing a full face, I don't use foundations. I only use spot correctors like, like this, because I like perfected skin, but that looks like skin. I am very picky when it comes to textures and I like to touch my face without having dirt. <laughs> so I want to feel my true skin. In the morning, what I do is typically using an untinted SPF plus a touch of tinted SPF layered on top. And that for me is my lightweight foundation. So um, this is enough for me, as you can see, the color is a touch more yellow compared to my skin, but I have a lot of redness on my skin. I think with the powder on top, it will be fine. And for the occasion, for this occasion today, I will use only blue and old brushes, practically my Tanseido brushes and Sonia G. Later on, after the application, I will discuss in more detail all the products. I picked two very expensive Kolinsky brushes by Tanseido. This is KQ12 and this is KF Tennis. I like the shape of this. And I've just purchased a brush by Sisley that has this shape. I like the flat top here. It allows for application as a one and done, but also tight line, you know, it's very, multifunctional brush for eyes. I'm loving this shape lately. This is the product that inspired this video and it's the Surat Souffle Eyeshadow in Gris Du. So we will see together how it looks. It has a stopper here and it has a unique, very unique jelly texture, bouncy, bouncy jelly texture. So it's a gel, you see, I usually swirl my brush in this gel. Now I found that this texture is so thin. You see how thin I can layer this eyeshadow. And yeah, it it's like a splash of water on my eyes. It lasts all day on me. I know that there are people that had problem with the longevity of this eyeshadow, but it's not my case. And it gives a luminous layer of taupe in this jelly formula. Now it will eventually crease a bit. Let me enforce the presence of the eyeshadow here. And I can be very precise with this brush. And yeah, tight lining here. So for me, this is a look, even a glam look because I will point the accent of other parts, maybe on my clothing or my hair. So I don't want to overdo. And if I have a special occasion, often I opt for this type of one and done look that enhances the highs without screaming beauty influencer. <laughs> then to complete the look, I usually put eyeliner and or eye pencil. These Victoria Beckham, they are appropriate for this video because they are unique in the sense they are the softest in the market. I'm going to use two colors, the bronze one and the matte brown. And you can end up with this because the point is so soft that usually you break the pencil. Okay, and this is the problem on not having an automatic 
pencil because then it can be even dangerous for your eyes. That's the reason why I prefer automatic pencils. And when I will use up this one, I will switch to the Sisley ones that are automatic, that are less soft, more practical, faster, and longer lasting compared to this. I will switch to another one. I will use the bronze one. The point here is better looking. And I find that this bronze color enhances my brown eyes. I need to do a video about how to enhance brown eyes. So I will just frame the eyes and then I will use the eyeliner. I will use my Valentino one. This is my second favorite after the Tom Ford, but the Tom Ford is so expensive that I, I don't feel, I mean, wise to spend that money. Although I wasted my money a lot lately on subpar products, but you know, you learn your lessons and I think that this is totally equivalent, this eyeliner by Valentino. I don't have eyes that are in my opinion, with the right shape for, for eyeliner. My mom has beautiful eyes for eyeliner, but mine, since they, they fall down, they have this curvature here. I don't know. I, I should do, you know, um, a very thick wing in order to have that cut eye effect. So what I like to do with eyeliner that I use very often is just to elevate a bit, just fake the curvature by putting some, some black in this part here and nothing more. This I think is very nice, elegant and appropriate for my eyes. This has the disadvantage of not releasing pigment if you store it with the point up. This is double side item. On one side there's the eyeliner, on the other side there's automatic pencil. That is a bit too hard. What I, I should remember to do is to store it with the pencil on top so that the eyeliner is upside down and that is the trick not to dry out the eyeliner. But I forgot about it and therefore I <laughs> the eyeliner doesn't write very well <laughs> today. But this is the defect of this. Other than that, when it writes well, it's totally equivalent to the Tom Ford that for me is still the best. I, I tried everything. I tried Kat Von D, Chanel. I tried whatever eyeliner is on the market and the best one is the Tom Ford one. The Lisa Eldridge I haven't tried, but I don't like that uh, the tip is felt. I like brush tip. This is brush tip, the Valentino one. Okay, uh, so yeah, I like the fact that this liner by Victoria Beckham recalls the gold particles that are in the surat. Otherwise, the surat turns very cool tone on me. I feel that my under eyes are particularly dark and I will use another unique product in the market, in my opinion, that is the Oric. Now, the Oric literally erases years from my under eye, but only this shade, Selenite. I used to have two shades and the other one was the lighter one, but this one, since it has peach tones, it brightens my, my eyes and it, have, it has also a color correction. Now, why it is unique? It is unique. Let me see if I can show you the reason. It is unique because it's quite opaque. Other products, the, the most famous one is the Charlotte Tilbury one. Other products are uh, more sheer, while this has an amount of coverage. Let me use this brush by Tanseido KQ12. And let's see if I can bright up the area. Yeah, it did it a bit. Today I woke up with this dark area here. But since this video is a video about unique products, it may be worth showing you another unique product that you cannot get anymore because it's a very old Tom Ford product. So this is the product, is a Tom Ford corrector. You see, uh, I finished up. This is all the amount I have. It's practically finished, but this corrector fits 
this part and this is already enough and maybe a little bit here. I think I will switch to a Sisley corrector. I've seen that Sisley has a corrector like this, stick corrector. And then I have two gems. One I showed you is the Scott Barnes 63 brush and it has this shape, like a fan shape. And the other one is a Shuemura, is the glorious Shuemura when they use Kolinsky. These were so expensive is the 5R and this is perfect because it fits, you see, my under eye area, my darkness. So I used to love this for placement, but for blending, I still prefer this one by Scott Burns. I'm picky and I want to look as I don't have anything. These are the most unique shapes for brushes that I own and I won't do anything more than that. Otherwise I will be, I will result fake. So this for me is more than enough. So let's proceed further with blush. The two most unique textures for brushes on the market, in my opinion, are for liquid blush, this one, that is Daniel Sandler, the iconic watercolor blush. Let's put both of them. So I will shake it up and then put a bit on my finger and yeah, I, I can apply it directly. This helps also to uniform my redness. I will use this brush and maybe my finger to, to be faster. Okay, I, I did it already. So this is the effect that I like because you can see I don't use filters. I don't use anything <laughs> to blur my skin. You will see all my pores, but that's me. I'm fine with it. I'm more concerned about makeup y look. And although it won't show up as beautiful as I see it in real life, I like to fake a true skin effect. So this seems a redness that comes from my skin. This, this is here, is a redness from my skin, but is more blended out. Seems that is a natural flush from my cheeks. That's, that's what I want. I want microscopically forget about makeup. And I accept that you will see a golden hue around my eyes, then it will look like makeup. But for my base, I like to fake it as it was truly my skin. So it's a no makeup makeup for face. <laughs> I will use powder to remove a bit of the shine. And the most unique powder in the market, in my opinion, is this one. It's a flower nose powder that has been discontinued. I think the closest may be the Pat McGrath the blurring under eye powder. That is the closest to this one. This is as the Pat McGrath talc free. And I like the convenience of having a pressed powder. It is so lightweight, like a loose powder. So I will put it with uh, the Sonia G Master Face brush all over. And yeah, this will uniform my skin and will give a veil of opacity without overdoing it. You see that it hasn't removed all the shine, it's just a veil of mattifying quality. The finish is beautiful. I can put it also a little bit on my under eye and that's it. And then another blush. The other blush that I would like to mention in this video about unique textures is the Givenchy Prisma Libre blush. And this is Mousseline Lila. With this blush brush, that is a Tanseido squirrel brush from Fefou de Japan, not directly from Tanseido. And therefore you cannot customize the brush and the default is without name. But this is a, an amazing squirrel brush that, yeah, is a caress on your face. I don't think you will notice anything. Let me put another, just for the sake of the video. 
I will put another little bit to show you better the effect. Again, a natural flush from your cheeks with a satin quality. You see that it's not a flat matte and it gives the brightening that I would like. And it's totally undetectable. Uh, you can see my pores, but you cannot see the powder, the blush powder. So this is what I mean for no makeup makeup, like it was my skin. Yeah, I have another mention for the blush. A more cost-effective option is this Kiko Water Eyeshadow in shade 201. I love it as blush. It's more like a blush contour. It's a beautiful pink, but more muted with a tad of mauve, but light still. Let me try to place it like a contour. It's more luminous. You see, you see it here. This is more visible. It's less sophisticated compared to a Givenchy one. But the Givenchy is a loose powder. Here you can see some glitters, so it's not microscopical, <laughs> undetectable. But sometimes you need to be a little bit more um, made up. <laughs> and this is still a neutral, it's a great shade, a little bit more visible. But still unique, use this face product. And finally, if I see myself a little bit pale, it's not the case. I have nice coloring right now. So personally, I don't feel the necessity of having a bronzer. I don't use bronzers in my everyday life. And even for a full face, but maybe for a full face, if you have a glammy band, something like that, I would use less blush. If I use less blush, then I will maybe try to uh, put a bit of bronzer. And the most unique bronzer is something that is not meant to be a bronzer, is this Hourglass Dim Light. For me, dim light is a bronzer. A great disadvantage of bronzers for me is that most of them tend to be yellow. And if you put yellow on my face, I become darker and orange. Because I have redness plus yellow, I develop orange on my on my skin. It's unflattering. Uh, it seems like, yeah, 80s. <laughs> In the 80s, I remember those women with this orange blush. I, I don't like it. I eat it. I eat orange. <laughs> what I can do is try to frame my forehead with a little bit of this dim light. And this dim light ambient powder by Hourglass is a mauveish powder. So it gives a bit of redness and it's very natural and is unique. It's a unique bronzer because you, you see, I got a bit of coloring here, but in a, such a subtle way. This is the only bronzer I can admit on my face. And yeah, it's difficult and it's difficult to notice, but ear is clear and ear is a bit bronzed. Another thing is that I'm noticing, <laughs> I'm renting now. Experts, <laughs> experts used to place bronzers in a tree shape. You see, so you draw a tree, a number three on your face. Now, I don't think you can do that with a bronzer because bronzer should be a bit warmer. So the lower part of the tree should be done with the more grayish powder, or you can do the tree with the bronzer that is very difficult to find. All our glass powders that I'm aware of do not have gray. And if you know a hourglass powder that has gray, let me know it because I, I want to know. I'm a muted, I'm a soft person. I like a bit of desaturation on my face. And uh, I find that more than this reddish thing, a, a grayish, adding some gray in the targeted spot in the right places, enhances my feature. It's like popping up. The texture by these 
ambient lighting powders for me is unique because I couldn't could not find uh, true dupes. Um, many brands have baked powders, but the ambient lighting powders by Hourglass have this uh, satin quality and they are totally undetectable. You, you can see they are microscopically again <laughs> undetectable. Kiko, for example, has baked products, but um, to me, I could I can see the grains, I can see the powder. Highlighter. The most unique highlighter, in my opinion, is this by Flower Nose. It's a Woxy Jelly formula. I've talked about it in the past. And the uniqueness is in the texture because it is totally, again, undetectable with this glow that seems um, coming from a liquid, but is a powder, is a Woxy powder. So a lot of silicone in it. But I like how it sits on my skin, the, the glow that gives without particles, and the elegance and the wear time. I really love it. Let's put it here, a bit out fashion, but. And finally, we'll finish up with the mascara. This is by an Italian brand called Mulac. This is my favorite shape, the curved wand, because my lashes are straight. And the curved wand helps them. To be honest, it doesn't make a difference for me to use a lash curler because I, I get a bit of curl, but it doesn't stay that way. So this is the maximum I get. Of course, if I use a curler right now, you will see it. You will see the eyelashes curved, but it won't last long. So in an hour, they will be back this way. My lashes are thick and heavy. If you have other methods to get your lashes more curled, let me know. I'm curious to know your tricks. And there's that. Let's recap the unique products the most unique products in the market that I showed you in this video. Let's recap what I used in this demo and the most unique products. This one is the Glorious Clay Depot Concealer in a shade beige. Yeah, it's, it's not truly unique. This by Tom Ford is unique in terms of the practicality. This stick fits the hollows behind my eyes and my dark circles, so great. And this used in combination with these two unique brushes, this by Scott Burns 63, while this Koninsky brush by Shiwemura is longly discontinued, but it's great for placement. You can find art brushes like this. Also, maybe something from the refer. I purchased a few brushes now that they are selling the mini and max brushes singularly. So um, we will have a comparison soon. Then let's finish the brushes. I used this brush by Sonia G Master Face. I like it. Sonia G is impeccable in quality, but um, to be honest, I, I don't think it's so unique. While this one is unique, Tanseido and Sonia G are my favorite Fude brands. They have opposite styles. Um, Sonia G makes denser brushes that are perfect for the new formulations, especially the baked ones, baked, baked, the gelée. While Tanseido is more for loose powders, for uh, pigmented powders, because it's airy. I like the bundling. The way they bundle the heads is airy. It's soft, very delicate application. So there's the characteristic of Tanseido. Uh, you need to love this type of sheer wash of color, watercolor effect. If you do, then Tanseido brushes are something to discover if you are fine with natural air bristles. Uh, these are also natural hair. These are Kolinsky brushes and they are great. Uh, Kolinsky is practical, but I do think that you can definitely go for uh, sable hair and 
to me, they are practically the same in terms of final result. And I would be even, I will push this even further. The Kolinsky fibers are the closest to synthetic hair because they are more resilient, they are harder, they are silky, smooth, but they are harder. I can justify this type of brushes in the past before plastic was discovered and employed. But now that synthetic brushes are used, there's truly no reason to use this type of brushes, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Of, of course, natural bristles are a bit superior in terms of blending, grabbing the product, but Okay, that means that with synthetic, you may use the product twice. You can pass your brush twice. I mean, nothing is, that is so different in terms of final result. And that is what it matters, right? Rent finished. Then the eyes, for um, the eyes, this is a very unique product. This is Surat Gridu. I want to show you again the texture. This is the golden top, and then there's a, a, a silver top. I don't know the name, but you, you can definitely pick the product, but you have this jelly, jelly texture, bouncy jelly texture that is so unique. And I have this since December, and uh, it has not dried down in any way. And this is very long lasting on me. Everyone has a different, you know, on my skin, this is uh, long lasting and it's so thin. You have seen it on my eyes. It doesn't say a lot on the swatch, but is the effect on the eyes that I find remarkable. And this is the most unique product. I mean, we are comparing different things, but this is very innovative in terms of how different it is compared to the competition to other brands. Okay, Victoria Beckham, nice, but I, I I show you the defects. Valentino, nice. I show you the defects. Here we put something that is nice, but not truly unique. And I needed to round up my look. And here I will put the unique products that are these ones. Let's finish the discussion. Blushes. This blush is a must try. Pick the color that you prefer. There are multiple colors, six, seven, I think, plus limited editions that continue to pop up, but it's, it's great if you like sheer and undetectable makeup. It's my favorite. I'm gonna to declutter dupes that I have in other, maybe in compact forms, whatever, because I, I truly prefer this one. It, it is messier, less practical, but worth it. This one is a, a great liquid blush. It's like your skin. Again, pick the color that you like and stick with it because it's great. This is another unique texture because it has more coverage compared to Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, the, this shade, the Selenite, has uh, this peach tone that is color correcting and it makes miracles under your eyes. That's my favorite way to use it. I don't use it a lot. I don't use it, use it often, but it gives a refined look that makes it unique compared to equivalent products. And then Unique Highlighter by Flower Nose. This Woxy Gelee formula. I don't use highlighter often, but when I do, this is my favorite. It's my holy grail and another holy grail again from flower nose is the powder is the most unique pressed powder because it fakes the loose powder without all the mess the kiko water eyeshadow in shade 201 is great as brontor I, I love this a little bit more visible but unique bronzer <laughs> I think I will eventually declutter this. So check my vintage. I will remove this one that is already loose. Uh, this is my favorite, is dim light. So I will put maybe a blush, something else, and I will declutter this because I noticed that my bronzer is this one. My perfect bronzer is dim light. 
and it makes my skin a bit red in a natural way. So this is my bronzer, my perfect bronzer, hourglass ambient lighting dim light. For me, the uniqueness is this ambient lighting powder. This is the unique texture that I love. We have done because this mascara is nice, but not unique. So is in the category here. So consider subscribing and let me know in the comments if you want to know the most youthful textures. So let me know if you are interested in a video about the most youthful makeup and subscribe to make sure that you will be notified for it. For sure, youthful makeup involves more of the big Dechelet formula. One video you can already watch is this one about Dior, where I go into the detail of the palette. So see you there. Bye.